Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and for those of you that have just stumbled on the channel, why not hit the subscribe button now? In this video presentation, we're going to be looking at the whys, whens and wherefores of two-visit endodontics and I'll try and explain my rationale for using this approach. In this case, I'm going to be retreating a maxillary molar using a two-visit approach with a calcium hydroxide dressing and then we'll be obturating with a bioceramic cement. I hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoperative radiograph of the maxillary left first molar, showing the existing root filling. The preoptive radiograph shows that the root filling material is slightly short in the palatal root. There are signs of inflammatory resorption around the apex of the MB root, and there are periopical radiolucencies associated with all the root apices. So taking into account both the radiographic evidence and clinical presentation, I decided to treat the case over two visits. The previous root filling was technically reasonable, and all the root canals had been located. There was a chronic abscess and signs of inflammatory resorption, and a sinus tract. A two-visit approach would allow me to see signs of early healing after cleaning and shaping. The composite material from the previous access cavity was removed using a long tapered diamond burr and a StarTex ultrasonic tip. I am now using a large LN burr to refine the access at the level of the pulp floor. Gates Glidden 2 is a very efficient way of removing GP from the coronal part of the root canals. The gutter perca in the root canals was quite soft and easily thermoplasticized. I was able to continue its removal using a ProTaper SX instrument. After confirming my working lengths using an electronic apex locator, I rapidly tapered all the canals using small and primary Wave 1 Gold instruments. I'd managed to watch wind the size 10 hand file to the working length and create a small glide path. However, there was GP still to remove and this is why I used the small instrument first 
and finished on a primary. The irrigation sequence consisted of 3% sodium hypochlorite agitated with an ultrasonic irisafe tip and 17% EDTA. After irrigation, all the canals were dried with sterile paper points and they were now ready for placement of a medicament, calcium hydroxide. There's a vlog coming up soon showing simple techniques for placement of calcium hydroxide. So what kind of cases lend themselves to a two-visit approach in endodontics? Well, trauma cases and regenerative endo, where we're looking to clean the root canal maybe in the first visit and also limit the length of the operative time, certainly if we're dealing with children. Acute cases, if you've got an emergency case or a case where there's a very swollen face, you don't want to be doing that in a single visit. Chronic cases such as this, where there may be a sinus tract and we want to see some resolution of that before we obturate. Or perhaps a complex retreatment case where it's going to take a long time to dismantle the previous root filling. And maybe if there's a complex diagnosis, you're not quite sure whether this is the tooth that's causing the facial pain, and so you want to see some resolution of that before completing your root canal treatment. We're now joining the case at the second visit, and we're going to remove the temporary restoration and the calcium hydroxide from the root canals. I use a combination of sodium hypochlorite and EDTA with some agitation to remove the calcium hydroxide. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have already noticed that there are actually two distobuckle canals. I'm now doing my cone fitting through a pool of sodium hypochlorite before exposing a diagnostic radiograph. I only placed three gutta-perca cones because I knew there was confluence between the pairs of canals in the buccal roots. Here you can see proof of confluence as I draw back on the syringe and the irrigant disappears from both the mesial canals. In this case, all the canals were sealed using a bioceramic sealer, Bioroot RCS, and a single cone GP.
Excess sealer is easily washed away from the excess cavity, which was then sealed using a dual cure composite. Just a reminder of the preoperative radiograph showing the existing root filling and a conventional view of the post-operative result showing a good coronal apical seal in all the root canals. There's an interesting delta at the tip of the palatal root and you remember that this looked to be a little bit short in the preoperative. A distal angle view shows the confluence between all the root canals in the buccal canals very nicely and again that delta at the apex of the palatal root. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's going to be many more exciting cases. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.